Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. The Adventures of Superman. When the planet Krypton, home of a race of supermen, exploded into dust, the sole survivor was an infant boy who had been shot to Earth in a sealed rocket. Today, that boy, grown to manhood, is known as Superman, sworn enemy of the forces of evil. To aid him in his never-ending fight for truth and justice, he masquerades as Clark Kent, crime reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. His secret is carefully guarded. No one is aware that Kent is Superman. No one but you. <laughs> Join with us now on ABC as Superman finds himself pitted against an unseen menace in an exciting transcribed mystery adventure entitled The Ghost of Billy Baker. There is nothing quite so dark and silent as the bowels of the earth. In the pitch blackness, in the complete and utter silence, a whisper becomes an echoing shout, and the faint beating of a human heart is like the rhythmic pounding of a kettle drum. The little coal mining town of Hunnaker is a disordered settlement of 30 or 40 dirty clabbered houses, two company stores, and a saloon. Above the town, joined to it by two narrow roads, is the Hunnaker Valley coal mine, a savage, ugly black scar on the side of a wooded hill. As our story begins, Clark Kent and Lois Lane, reporters for the Metropolis Daily Planet, are riding up one of the roads in an ancient car driven by the local taxi man. Now, can't take you no further. They got the gate closed. You'll have to walk the rest of the way. How far is it? Tank fur, a couple of hundred feet. It's the building with the light in the window. I see it. Uh-oh, watch the running board, Lois. It's loose. Ah, been meaning to nail that up. That might be a good idea. What do we owe you, Skipper? Ah, uh, that'll be $2. Clark, hadn't we better have him wait? It's getting dark. We'll never find our way back to town. How about that, Skipper? Can you wait for us? It shouldn't be more than an hour. Sorry, mister, but I can't do it. Got to meet the 647 going east. Oh, uh, okay. Forget it, Skipper. Here's your $2. Let's fly. Now, if you get stuck now, you just hike up the telephone, sing out for old Luke. That's my name. I'll be up as fast as Betsy here will carry me. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Don't mention it. Well, night now. Good night. Good night. <laughs> There's a character for you. For you, not for me. <laughs> Old Luke and Betsy. Combined age, well, um, 150. They're both still running. You think we'll be when our combined age is 150? I'd rather not think about it. Now, <laughs> let's get this over with and get back to civilization. All right. Uh, is that the gate he was talking about? I don't see any other. How can we get in if it's locked? I don't see a soul around. Well, he said closed, not locked. Now, let's try it. Oh, dear. Hmm? You know, Clark, I think the chief is suffering from premature senility. Why? Is this what you call an assignment for the two best reporters in the shop? Oh, thanks, Lois. Thanks for what? Including me and the two. Well, you are. Thanks again. Now, really, does this make sense? Tracking all the way up here just because some soup put a story on the wire service that the mine is haunted. I ask you. <laughs> ah, the gate is open. Enter. Why couldn't he have sent Ernst or Kelly or Levine? Ours not to question why, ours but to do or die. Oh, hogwash. We should have questioned it. <laughs> you know how he is. He gets fixation. Well... All of a sudden, a haunted mind story is more important than life itself. I don't know how you feel about it, but from now oh, on, oh, I'm... Hold it, Lois. What's the matter? Someone's lurking in the shadow of that building. Where? Over there. Oh, I don't see anyone. It's a little old woman. Look, here she comes. Good evening. You looking for someone? Yes, Mr. McGraw. What do you want with Jeff McGraw? Well, now, really. We want to have a talk with Mr. McGraw. Oh, strangers to these parts, ain't you? Yes, and we have no intention of becoming permanent residents. Is that Mr. McGraw's office or house? Don't rush, 
so, girly, this time of plenty. Everything standing still, kind of my boy. Dump cars sitting on the track. Engines quiet. Not a soul stirring underground, kind of my boy. <laughs> what? You wouldn't think Billy could do all that, would you? But he done it. Yes. Hey, sure enough, done it. You, you ask Jeff McGraw. He'll tell you. Uh, is Mr. McGraw in that building? Yes, sir, he sure is. You ask him what Billy Baker done. You just ask him. <laughs> Come on, Lois. First Luke and Betsy and now this. What on earth was she talking about? Everything's standing still on account of her boy. What she means, I guess, is that the mine's closed down. Oh, well, who's her boy? All indications, Billy Baker. And who, pray tell, is Billy Baker? I don't know, but please, get that chip off your shoulder before we meet Baker. Baker? No, I mean McGraw. Not his fault we're up here. Don't blame him. I know whom to blame. Okay, okay. Are you all set? Now talk. I'm not a child. Go on, knock. You don't expect me to be all sweetness and light. The sooner we get out of this one-horse town, the better uh, I... Oh, good evening. Yeah. Mr. McGraw? That's right. Uh, I'm Clark Kent, and this is Lois Lane. How do you do? Yeah, uh, uh, we're from the Metropolis Daily Planet. We, we phoned you, but the local operator told us the mine wasn't accepting any calls. The mine's closed down. Yes, I know. Matter of fact, that's why we're here. One of the wire services carried a story, something about the mines being haunted, and we thought you might be able to give us more details. <laughs> tell him what my boy done. Go on and tell him. Get on back to your shack, Granny. <laughs> Go on, do as they say. You be sure to tell them. Tell them about my boy, Billy Baker. Sorry, you folks like to come in? Oh, thank you. Lois? Thanks, sir. She stopped us on our way up from the gate. Seems to have an obsession about her boy. Uh, sit down, Miss Lane. Thank you. Now, by rights, I shouldn't be talking to you. Mr. Hunnicker gave orders. He wants this thing quieted down, not built up. How come a big city paper is interested in a crazy fool thing up here in the hills? That's a good question, Mr. McGraw. A very good question. Well, it's like anything else. We take orders, too. We were sent here to get the story. Don't ask us why. If there's no story, we'll just turn around and go back. Well, there's a story, all right, but uh, I don't put any stock in it. These ignorant people around here might, but I don't. Well, then suppose you tell it to us, Mr. McGraw. Well, I don't know. Like I said, Mr. Hunnicker wants this quieted down. He's losing 3000 a day with the pit's idle. If the men don't come back soon, he'll sell out and turn his back on it. He's an old man with plenty of money. He don't need this. Well, we can promise you, Mr. McGraw, if it isn't news, we won't touch it. Uh, you mean anything I say is off the record? That's what it amounts to. No, no, let's get this straight. If what you tell us is just local rumor or gossip, it's off the record. If it's news, the kind of news we print, well, that's another story. Sound all right to you? Uh, sounds all right. Depends how it works out. How much do you know? Only what the wire story said, that your workers had walked out because the mine was haunted. Uh, you don't know why they think it's haunted? Nope. Hmm. Well, a year ago today, one of our pick men took it into his head to do a little exploring up a condemned worker. Uh -oh. I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, what's a working? Uh, that's a tunnel or a pit, ma'am, where coal can still be worked. Oh, I see. Well, anyway, uh, we shut this one up, see, on account of the shore and was weak and the walls were beginning to split, making yes. it dangerous to dig coal in there. Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. now, but that didn't stop this boy. He knew the working was marked off, but he went in anyway. Well, why would he... Well, we uh, had kind of a bonus deal on that, see. Coal was short, and I guess he figured he'd hit pay dirt. Oh. See? Now, there was plenty of coal in the working, but it was too dangerous trying to get it out. Uh-oh. I can guess what's coming. You guessed right, miss. He put the pick into the walls a couple of times, and before anyone could shout him out, the shore and then the walls came down on top of him. Wow. A thousand tons of coal and rock. I don't suppose you got him out alive. You never got him out at all. Wasn't even any sense trying. You mean he's still buried in the mine? Yeah, that's right, ma'am. His folks signed a paper saying it was all right. Oh, how awful. Yeah, Mr. Hunnicker agreed to take care of him for the rest of their lives, even though it was the boy's fault. Oh. Would have cost $50,000 to sink a shaft and dig up that stuff, so now uh, we brought his minister up, said a few words over him, and let him lay peaceful. What was his name, Mr. McGraw? Billy Baker. 
Billy Baker. Didn't know him, did you? Well, well, um, no, but... That old woman mentioned his name to us. Oh, she's his mother. Oh. Yeah, you see, his father died three or four months ago. We gave her a shack on the mine property. She kind of cleans up around the office, you know. Everybody around here knows her and understands. Uh-huh. Well, let's get back to the story. You left Billy Baker buried in the old mine. Yeah, that's right. A year ago today. Well... This morning, when the night shift came up out of the work and they spread the rumor, they could hear Billy Baker's ghost down there. Why? Yeah, that was all the day crew needed. Most of them are from the old country, and a lot of these people, uh, why, you know, they're superstitious. Well, of course. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't go near the shaft. Finally, I went down. Of course, it was just a lot of cock and bull. What did the men say they heard? Oh, no, some creaking and groaning, I guess. Now, you get that sometimes in the mine when the shore and sweats up and swells, but... They will go down, not them. And that's the story, eh? Yeah, that's it. Well, all I can say is, as darkness falls, we leave the picturesque coal mining village of Hunnaker and return to the big city. Where, believe you me, Clark Kent, I'm going to give Mr. Perry White a big piece of my mind. Thank you for your patience, Mr. McGraw. Uh, Come on, Clark, let's go. What, is what was that? Sounded like dynamite. Now, the stupid fools, what do they think that's going to accomplish? What happened? Oh, well, they blew up the old shaft leading down into the condemned mine. Empty headed idiots. Uh, I'd better rob them before they do any real damage. You're not going to shoot them, are you? Oh, uh, the shotgun? No, that's just to scare them off. I'll go along with you if you don't mind, McGraw. Uh, okay, by me, but the lady better stay behind. Oh, no. Uh, they're kind of ill tempered now, man. Yeah, he's right, Lois. We'll only be a few minutes. Are you covered? Yes. Sometimes I think I ought to have my head examined. Why do I bother with this? Why don't I just pack up and leave? Probably because you get a kick out of mining coal. Yeah, maybe, but the kick's not worth the blood and sweat. Let's look at those crazy fools. That shaft wasn't worth anything, was it? No, but if they planted the charge deep, the blast might lose the shoring in the main tunnel. Okay, this is far enough. They're pretty handy with a pickaxe at close range. There must be 50 in that mob. Yeah, all the old timers. All right. You guys get off the property or I'll fill you full of butt shots. Do you hear what I said? He no work for mine where ghost is. Nobody's asking you to work the mine. Now get off the property. What? Now the next one will blow your heads off. I'll count three. One, two, three. Well, I did it. Yeah, they won't come back tonight. But there's tomorrow night and the next night and plenty of nights after that. I'm not going to be responsible for what happens. Kent, uh, that's your name, isn't it? Yes. Want to do me a favor? Well, if I can, gladly. I'm going to call Hunnaker in Harrisburg. I'm going to put you on and let you tell him what you saw here tonight. Well, if it'll help any, I'll be glad to do let it. Let him sell, let him close up. I just don't want to be responsible. It's not worth it. Come on, let's go back. <laughs> He needs this mine like he needs a hole in the head. He's got five open-faced pits over near Scranton. The only reason he held on to this one's because they named the town after him. Well, when I get him on the phone, you tell him what those crazy miners did here tonight. Maybe that'll convince him, huh? Hey, what happened to Miss Lane? I... Oh, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe she's uh, washing her hands back there. Huh? Lord? Lord? Funny. Didn't follow us, did he? I don't think so. Lois! Lois! You don't think maybe she got sore and hiked into town? Oh, no, not in the dark. No one else around, is there? Uh, no one except me and Granny Baker. But she couldn't have gotten far, Kent, no matter where she went. She was only gone five minutes. I don't see a sign of anyone out here. Yeah, it's too dark, huh? No, there just isn't anyone. Lois! Lois! Well, she'd have heard you by now if she was around. How far is it to town? Half mile down the hill. No, she wouldn't try it alone at night. Hey, what was that? Sounded like the slack chain on the main shaft elevator. Come on, let's get a look. You sure, McGraw? Positive. That shaft car was up here at the top all day. Couldn't have been no other place. Last ones to use it was the night shift when they came up this morning. And now you say it's at the bottom of the shaft? Five hundred and sixty feet down. The car hit the bottom. We heard the slack chain rattling. But Miss Lane couldn't have taken the car down alone. Not unless she's been around deep shaft mine. Oh, she hasn't. Uh, 
There's no use looking down there, Kent. You can't see nothing. You'd be surprised. I can see the elevator car. And I see two people walking along a tunnel. What? Hey, what are you hanting me? No man alive can see down that shaft. One of them is carrying a miner's light. It's that old woman. A granny baker? Yes. Yeah. Hey, look, this is your idea of a joke, Kent. I just finished telling you that shaft is 560 feet deep and pitch dark. Take my word for it. They're down there, Lois and the old woman. How do we bring that car up? Now, wait a minute, Kent. In the first place... Look, wait... McGraw, I'm not going to stand here arguing with you. Miss Lane is down in that mine with a demented person. She's in danger. Now, take it easy. Take it easy, Kent. Granny Fake is harmless. She wouldn't hurt a fly. Well, why did she take Lois, Miss Lane, down into the mine? I'm not sure she did because you say so. Don't make it so. McGraw, either you bring that elevator car up or I'll go down that shaft under my own power. Man, you're talking crazy. Am I? Well, to do it, I'll have to put you to sleep. So make up your mind and make it up fast. Okay, okay, if that's the way you want it. Throw that lever. Which one? The one on the right with the shiny handle. Now, you can't get down there alone, Kent, without a light... I can't go with you. Kind of those miners might take it into their heads to come back. Don't worry about me. All right, but remember, you're doing this on your own responsibility. If anything happens down there, we've got no way of getting you out. You'll die in the dark like Billy Baker. We'll be back in a moment for part two and the exciting climax of The Ghost of Billy Baker. But first, here is your ABC announcement. Most of you listeners are well aware that millions of people in Europe are seriously in need of food and clothing. But not all of you are completely familiar with CARE. C-A-R-E. This is shown by Parcel Post figures. You see, exclusive of CARE packages, private persons sent $250 million worth of relief and gift packages to Europe last year alone. Now, CARE buys its supplies in huge quantities and operates on a non-profit basis. For $10, CARE sends airmail one of several different types of packages to whomever you designate in 15 different countries. Each food package is designed to supplement the rations of a family of four for a month. Just send $10 to CARE New York for a food package, or specify one of CARE's other packages. Give your name and address and the name and address of the recipient. You'll receive a signed receipt upon delivery. Remember, send more for less through CARE. And now, back to the adventures of Superman, and part two of The Ghost of Billy Baker. Riding the elevator car down the main shaft over McGraw's warnings and protests, Clark Kent reaches the broad loading tunnel of the Hunnaker Mine, almost 600 feet beneath the surface. Other tunnels laid with narrow gauge tracks fan out from it in both directions. For a moment, Kent stares into the darkness, making use of Superman's amazing X-ray vision. He can see clearly along the branch tunnels until they curve out of sight. But curiously enough, he cannot see through the thick black walls. For unknown to him, the coal mine is laced with deposits of lead, the one substance through which his X-ray vision cannot penetrate. Puzzled and confused, Kent starts down the main tunnel, calling for Lois. Lois! But the only reply is a oh, mocking yeah. echo fading down the tunnel, bouncing from wall to wall like a thing alive. Meanwhile, some distance from the main shaft, Lois and the old woman, Granny Baker, are approaching what seems to be a dead end, a heap of coal and rock and rubble reaching to the tunnel ceiling. Here, here's the place. Here's where the old tunnel walls come down. Now, now you just listen. You just listen close. I don't hear anything. <laughs> Sometimes you've got to wait. He don't move all the time, Billy doesn't. When did you hear him last? Can't get down here except when the night shift is off. Uh, Sundays mostly. Every Sunday. You heard him last Sunday night? Yeah, it's a bell. Even heard his heart beating. My Billy was a strong one. You listen, dear. You listen close. I'm sorry, but I don't hear anything. Let me get close there. It's moving 
sitting on now. Probably just sitting. Billy. Billy boy. I think we'd better go back. No, no need. Ain't nobody down here now. <laughs> My Billy boy scared him away, he did. You just be patient, girly. You'll hear him, like I said. Yes, I'm sure I will, but I think we'd better go back now. My friend will be waiting for me. You think I'm crazy in the head, like everyone else, don't you? No, it isn't that. It's just... I know. You don't have to put on. You're saying to yourself right now, why did I ever come down here? with this old wind. No, believe me, we can come back later. <laughs> no, no, we're here and we're going to stay till my Billy boy starts moving around. i got to let you hear it so you can tell all the people in the big city. <laughs> Please, it, 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 it's cold down here and I'm not dressed warmly enough. You won't freeze. You've got more flesh on your bones than I have. If you want to stay, why don't you give me that light and I'll find my way back to the shaft alone. Oh, wouldn't that be a crazy thing for me to do? Leave myself with no light. There's a lot of tunnels down here. A body could get lost easy. Then you've just got to come with me and no more nonsense. Don't get your dander up, girlie, and don't talk sharp. I've been coming down here every week for a year, so my Billy boy wouldn't get lonesome. And you ain't been down not once before. And I'm sorry I came down this time. Don't you realize that... Well, don't you understand? Your son has been dead for a year. Dead, is he? <laughs> oh, that's so much you know. He's sitting in there just waiting for me to dig him out. Always was a patient one, my Billy. Well, I'm not patient. Give me that lantern, Rob. Oh, thank Boys. heaven. Boys, where are you? Oh, my Billy, didn't you? Boys. Yes, I did. Over oh, here, Clark, at the end of the big tunnel. What are you shouting for? It isn't your son. It's my friend, Mr. Kent, looking for me. Let's hear your voice again, Lois. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, he won't find you. Let's go. Uh, let's go. What's your eyes? Oh, oh, help. You're uh, not fixing up, baby. All right, all right. That's enough. Let's go of her, Granny. Let's go. She was... Joking, you leave me, Billy. Oh, stop it, Granny, or I'll have to spank you. You lay a hand on me and my Billy will fret you good. All right, all right. All right. Calm down. Take it He's easy. Crazy, yeah. He's crazy, Clark. She's stark raving mad. Yeah, I know that's what you thought all along, but you're wrong, you see. She hears a son moving around yeah. behind that heap of rubble. I don't think I know. She says she heard his heart beating. And good and strong it is, too. Yeah, well, let, let, let's go back to the elevator shaft, Granny. We can talk about it there. No. No, i got to wait until my Billy boy starts moving around because I know he's all right. But I had to put up with Why on earth did you come down here with him? No him? use you to whisper and it won't change matters, son. Uh, Granny, listen to me. I'm listening for my Billy boy. But you'll have to carry her back to the shaft bodily. Uh, well, he's up and around now. I can hear him. You want to hear my Billy boy? Uh, yes, yes, I'd yes. like to hear it. Yes. Stand up close to them rocks. You can hear his heart a beat now. Listen. Listen close. Well, great Scott. What is it, Clark? You hear it, mister? Yes, I hear it. But you're not serious. I am. Listen. Heaven help us. I thought I was crazy, didn't you? You know better now. Clark. What is it? I don't know. Sounds like the beating of a heart. Maybe it is. Oh, no. Well, what have we got to say now, huh? You're right, Granny. Suppose you take Miss Lane back to the elevator shaft while I try to get your son out from behind these rocks. You think you can? I'll try. Oh, I'd sure be obliged. Come on along, girlie. Follow me. Clark, what is this? Go along with her. I'll meet you at the shaft. I'm, I'm afraid. Come along, girlie. Go ahead, Lois. It's all right. Don't worry. What are you going to do? I'm going to try to find out whether that's a heart or a hoax. Waiting in the complete and utter darkness until he is certain Lois and the old woman are beyond earshot, Kent quickly completes the transformation from a mild-mannered crime reporter to the heroic blue and red costumed figure of Superman. <laughs> then, turning to the solid wall of rock and rubble, he begins to tear it apart with his bare hands, throwing huge boulders and slabs of shale to one side as though they were pebbles. Doesn't seem to be any end to this. Uh, there must be. 
That beating sound didn't come from nowhere. Pounding ah. ahead like a human steam shovel, Superman bores deeper and deeper into the mass of rock and rubble. Finally breaks through into an open tunnel, lit, strangely enough, by a battery-operated bulb suspended from a wire nailed across the ceiling. In one corner of the tunnel, half hidden behind a pile of rock, is a human skeleton with shreds of clothing still clinging to the bare, dry bones. <laughs> Suddenly, he hears Lois's faint, far-off scream for help. Help! Help! Racing back along the main tunnel, he finds Lois hysterical and the old woman screaming imprecation up the shaft. An evil curse on your head for this! Me, you rotten purgatory! Explain! What is it? Oh, yes, what happened? Oh, the elevator car... Someone pulled it up. We're trapped down here. Devil's work. That's what it is. Get hold of yourself, Miss Lane. All right, Granny. What's that? Great Scott, stand back. It's dynamite with a live fuse. Glory be. I'll have to take it up the shaft. I'll be back for you. Grabbing the dynamite with its short, sputtering fuse, Superman leaps up the shaft like an arrow shot from a bow and keeps going until, with his strange power of flight, he is hovering in the sky high above the mine. Then, flinging the dynamite away from him, he watches it explode safely and harmlessly in empty air. But his work is not done. A human figure is running from the mine shaft to the company office. Dropping down like a bird of prey, Superman grabs him as he reaches the door. All right, McGraw, the party's over. You're through. Finish. and tell it to me slowly. Well, McGraw discovered another entrance to the portion of the mine that collapsed last year and trapped Billy Baker. It was a tunnel on the other side of the hill. Yes? He followed the tunnel a couple of months ago, discovered Billy Baker's body, and something else. What? The collapse of the tunnel walls had uncovered a deposit of uranium. Uranium? That's right. He's been working that tunnel secretly at night. Last night, the miners heard him moving around. Well, Granny Baker must have been hearing him since he started. She did. When he worked at Sunday nights, he wasn't too concerned about keeping quiet because he thought the mine was empty. But, Clark, what was that, that, that heartbeat we heard? Well, he had a Geiger counter. That's a device to check the presence of uranium. Yes, I know. Well, the slow ticking of it from behind that wall of rock and in that echoing tunnel sounded like the beating of a heart. And he did all this secretly in the hope that he could get the uranium ore out for himself? That's right. Now, from what the sheriff told me, if the local miners don't lynch him, he'll have plenty of time in jail to think things over. Well, here's the railroad station, Paul. The oh. train ought to be coming in soon. Well, thanks a lot, Luke. Two dollars, right? Yeah. Let's fly. Oh. Oh, oh, watch that running board, Lois. I'll be getting that fixed one of these days. Well, drop me a card when you do. <laughs> Say, uh, I meant to ask you, lady. Yes, Luke? Here, tell that feller Superman was up to the Hunnicker mine. Any truth in that? You better ask Mr. Kent, Luke. He seems to be Superman's general manager. (laughs) 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 And so ends the ghost of Billy Baker on The Adventures of Superman, which come to you now each week at this same time over many of these same ABC stations. Listen again next week to another exciting Superman adventure story. Superman is a copyrighted transcribed feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and brings you radio's most fabulous character in thrilling stories of action, mystery, and adventure. So be sure to listen when you hear the familiar cry, Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.